What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to the day in life video for the start of 2022. So in this video, I'm gonna go through like my routine of I guess what I do in a given day and show you guys a lot of like the business side and the general operations because I feel like the general consensus whenever somebody says they make YouTube videos for a living is that it isn't actually a lot of work. So for those who are watching the channel for the first time, I'm 24 years old and I'm the CEO of a media company that employs seven people at the moment. Some are in-house, uh, some are remote and also contracted. In terms of like the workload at the moment, I would say we are busier than ever before. To be honest, in like the YouTube and tech industry, January is usually like a quieter month, but this year there's already been about 20 campaigns that are confirmed that are on our queue at the moment. And so we're working on videos around the clock for brands and also videos that we want to make on the channel. And on top of that, I also recently purchased a new personal property and that is one that is gonna go through a huge renovation process and a YouTube series. And so the planning and the meetings have been during the daytime and that has affected the video workflow as well. Um, and there's also like the clothing company that I've invested in and that is going through a rebrand process with the retail store and the online brand, getting the inventory and all that in. And on top of that, we also have the previous home project that has recently completed its renovation and I'm just finishing up the filming on that but also setting up the whole Airbnb process to have its first guests as an Airbnb rental property in about 11 days from now. So there are just so many things and on top of that there's new members joining the team, we're getting the workflow together. You guys are going to notice though that my entire lifestyle is built around the business and although some people might think that is crazy or not exactly worth it to give up a lot of like personal time to commit directly to work, I would say I'm in an industry where it is very much like that and a lot of people do have a very similar lifestyle and the reason for it is because it is a huge opportunity that is not gonna be around forever. I spent a decade building it and I started making videos when I was like 13 years old, saving up money for years to be able to buy my first camera and I wasn't really making any money from it at all for like the first five years. I literally just did it for the fun of it but as it kind of grows as like a channel and a business and more opportunities come up, it is very important to kind of grow that with it and in order to build it into like a long long-term career. And right now, the YouTube channel itself has six revenue streams, with the largest one being sponsorships. AdSense is also another avenue, and that generates six figures on its own. And there's also stuff like affiliate earnings, uh, content coverage at events, and also licensed content. And on top of that, as a media company, we also own three pieces of property, with two of them that are gonna be short-term rentals. And the clothing retail store that the media company co-owns is essentially just like a project that we run on the side. It isn't exactly profitable, but it does self-sustain itself for most of the year. The core business and what I spend the majority of my time and resource on is the YouTube channel. And that is something that, as I mentioned, I've been making videos for about 10 years now, and I have over 1,100 videos on the channel. And it's just something that I would have never thought would be able to reach the point where we're making millions of dollars of videos for some of the largest brands in the world, while also being able to work with friends and people my age and continue to grow the team that way. I know you guys have probably seen a ton of courses out there, but I've also been working on one for the last year. And typically I don't have like the patience to be honest, to work on something for like an entire year, especially with how busy we are already. But I figured there's a huge side of like the YouTube and media company business setup and strategy. So if you guys wanna sign up for the newsletter, I'm launching the course relatively soon. We've just been like fine tuning it, going through beta testers and not really rushing to launch it and sell. We want it to be like a good long-term thing. And in that course, I talk about like YouTube business strategy, how I started, how to build your following, and then be able to monetize it. So if that's a space that you happen to be interested in, I'm gonna leave a link down below. So in terms of the morning routine, I keep things as simple as possible. I want to be able to sleep in as late as I can, but also get ready and get to work right away. And so the whole process of like showering, brushing the teeth, doing the hair is like 15 minutes and there isn't really many products involved. In terms of breakfast and coffee, there isn't really much to it. I just like have like a piece of bread or something, maybe a yogurt, but I definitely have to have coffee every single day. And a lot of times I'll just go out and buy coffee. It's fast and easy, but I also like to experiment with a lot of cool coffee machines that I've found in the past year or so, including like the Joy Resolve, the Concrete Coffee Machine from Anza, and most recently, this Ozma Cold Brew. I personally do prefer iced coffee by far, and let me know if that's the case with you as well, but this machine caught my eye just based on its design. I didn't really know what it did at first, but turns out it is a machine that specializes in making cold brew in under two minutes. And honestly, the end result is incredible. It looks great in the kitchen, and I talk more about this in my Cool Tuck episode. 
So after I get ready, I pretty much head straight to the home office desk at the start of every single day. And usually I plan to just like finish up on some emails, make sure everybody on the team knows what they're doing, check on the videos and the thumbnails and stuff. But I feel like I've heard other creators say this as well, that in YouTube, a very small percentage is actually spent on like filming and editing and that a large percentage of that time is spent on the administrative work, checking in on different things, like phone calls coming in, emails, planning and all that sort of stuff that I would say I actually do end up spending a lot of the day in the home office. We do have like a dedicated office space that we do film at and pretty much head there every single day, if not every other day. But personally, this like home office setup is for me to do my work during the day, but also in the evening when it comes to editing, color grading, and all that sort of stuff. But I'd pretty much been making videos by myself until about four years ago where I tried to build like an actual company and a team. And I would say the biggest like transition I noticed, even though like the core of the business is still making YouTube videos, is that as a CEO, your job throughout the day is to make decisions. There's a lot of little decisions and some big decisions, but everybody from the team will come to you to ask about like different questions, what they should be doing, feedback on stuff when it comes to like design or just like general administrative work. I don't know, I love like putting things together, tying different deals together and structuring them into like a very busy schedule. And I also love curating products for the renovation projects, for the YouTube videos. But I know my main job and what I have to do is be on camera and so it's important that I do spend the time to like practice the content and look over everything before we have to film. Okay, so we're in the pitch deck now. Um, the first one we're gonna take a look at, I think, is the home pitch deck. So first photo is good. We have the light color. So they use the cream colored uh, as the secondary, right? So the cream color that we already had. Yeah, I think the only change I would do is the secondary. Yeah. There's a lot of negative space there. And right in the middle when it says me, Justin. I would fix that. Yep below the intro so we can leave comments here and and josh can reference that the name this looks good um this structure is pretty good as well so you see like he's kind of built a framework of like verticals go on this side uh, we still don't have a lot of data on these decks it just doesn't seem like a focus and we want that to kind of be the the first and foremost i think all three of these metrics can go underneath the bio on the first page and then we change the r numbers to something that references directly to the home series and useful data that isn't already on the media deck we also have our style guide which has like the outline version of the feature logo and then the font all looks good so that's correlated there it is interesting though how like the cream colored and like the third color on the secondary palette for kinsville is slightly different but yeah i think the only thing is the number side of things so i know we talked about doing the slide where we would have maybe graphs or charts or something so maybe that's something that they can add on um, but otherwise i do think these decks are pretty good um, we are ready to get started on some of the custom decks after some of these stats have been addressed and having a few elements together, whether it's a graph, a clock, and that kind of thing to show the watch time, the click-through rate. So after a few different calls with members of the team and going through the things that we have to do, as well as talking with the interior designer briefly, just at the start of the day, I also have to go through some of the videos. So on a day that I'm uploading, I either have to ensure the final version is ready or we have to submit different drafts because we often get feedback throughout the day. And that is typically something that I try to get out of the way. Part of working with brands is that approval process and it's kind of just part of the job. It definitely isn't my favorite, but it's something you have to get used to. And by using Frame.io, I'm easily able to add all the assets, download file versions, and also XML files from the editing software so that many members of the team can hop in and work on it at any time. In terms of the core software that I use to keep track of all the things that we have to do and the ongoing projects, the main one is Notion where I have all of my different pages, lists, and also active campaigns campaigns, as well as like Milanote for putting together idea boards and interior design selections. And we also utilize Apple Notes just for some quick stuff and Evernote for more refined notes such as video scripts. As I mentioned, I do split some of my filming between home and also at the office. So usually while I'm like trying to get everything done, I might have a list of some clips from the previous day that I still have to get. After all the morning work is done in the home office, it's time to head out and I'm going to go and check on my new property and just see how things are going. Usually the midday mark is where you see a bit of progression from the previous day because trades seem to work between eight to four. 
So when it comes to like daily commute, if you guys have seen on Instagram, we recently did get a company car that was covered in partnership with a Victoria company that we work with. And the car that we chose was the Range Rover Velar. And it's really comfortable. It's able to fit all of the things that we need in terms of the camera equipment, tripods and lights. I still have my CLA 45 AMG that I still drive pretty much every day in the evenings and on weekends. But this company car definitely does get put to use. And a lot of times I'll just have Trevor drive so I could do like emails and just like make some calls while I'm in the car and I seem to like always drop it in between the seats. So now that we've got to the new property, this is actually a series that I haven't actually unveiled on the channel yet so you guys are getting a bit of a sneak preview. It's one that I purchased in November of last year and it's going to be the one that I move into after the full renovation is done so of course it is going to be like the ultimate series. The last one was an Airbnb, the one before that was our company office and my first renovation back in about 2019 was significantly lower budget because that was what I was able to do at the time. A lot of the day to day is just checking in on it, working with the interior designer to confirm different selections and also talking to construction. But there's also a lot of like curveballs in any renovation project, especially if you add the outdoors. And as you can see in this case, I got a free infinity pool with my unit. The biggest difference in this project is that I did hire a full service construction company. So they have like all the teams under their umbrella. And so the process should move a lot smoother as there is somebody working on the unit every single day whereas in the past we hired like a project manager who was just like a friend and they brought together all the individual trades that we selected and I found that there's just always gaps we were always chasing people around so the extra cost I hope will be worth it in a project like this on top of that I also hired an interior designer and even though I have like a pretty good idea of what I want overall it is important to have somebody who has professional knowledge in the industry to be able to help bring together the ideas filter the ones that maybe don't go together as well and also put together plans that the construction company can then understand. I know this may not seem like work, but as a media company that does invest in real estate, a big driver behind that is the fact that this home series is probably the most popular one on the channel at the moment. Because I started making videos at the age of 13, I had been doing like iPhone case reviews, smartphone reviews, consumer tech reviews in general. And so over the years, it obviously gets a little bit boring to always be in the same industry that you started in. And so my realistic interest at the moment is in how technology ties into real estate and interior design and building beautiful workspaces, living spaces, and home theaters. The series has not only helped grow the channel, but it also helps differentiate it from traditional tech videos, which we still do create. While at the same time growing the investments and hopefully purchasing more properties in the future that all have a different signature renovation design. So usually when it comes to lunch, I have it right around like 1.30 to 2.30 before I try to do a roll because if I have to talk in front of the camera for like 30 minutes and I hadn't eaten anything the whole day, then chances are it's not going to be a very good video and I'm going to forget what I have to say right away. I don't try to eat like extremely healthy or anything, but any time I can get like a macro bowl or something that just has like a mix of different things, I'll usually go for it. Sometimes I'll just eat at home or other times it might be at the home office while all the gear is getting set up for the videos, but it just really depends. So now that we're at the office, about a third of the day is spent on filming. And there's a difference between like A roll and B roll. With A roll, it means I'm sitting in front of the camera and that'll either be done at the office set or there's also one that I do at the home office set, which you guys have seen in the beginning of the video. But on top of that, even though it might look like I do all of my work on the home setup, I do also have a laptop that I take around with me just so we can access any like Dropbox files, go through Frame.io, and while the actual equipment is being set up by the team and everything, or while I'm having my lunch, I can at least go through like the different videos, the drafts, and leave revisions. I have tried to integrate like talks about like the software that you use and what contributes to my overall workflow. And if you're someone who is in the home industry, one program that I really recommend is Frame.io. I've heard about it before, but I really didn't start using it until about like the last year or so. And this essentially allows me to upload all my files to different members of the team so they can download it as quickly as possible to start editing. And typically I edit a proxy copy and then I'll have them upload a video draft to allow me to leave some comments and also draw on screen. After A roll is out of the way, it is time to do some B roll and this overhead stand that I picked up off eBay for an absolute steal has been a game changer. It just makes the overhead setup a lot easier than like these crazy rigs that we used to do before. And so I have the camera pointing down. I have a whiteboard that bounces the light to ensure that it's all nice and neutral. And from there, we get our flat lay shots. There really isn't anything too complicated about that. 
After all that filming, it pretty much takes me to the end of the day and it's usually around like 4 to 4.30 where we go over some of the remaining administrative work and stuff because it starts to get dark out here around then. So when it comes to the end of day workout, I want to give a huge thanks to Nordic Track and their X32i treadmill for sponsoring this video. So this product showed up and it definitely showcases a lot of tech in a product that also has an interactive service called iFit, which I'm going to talk about here. This treadmill itself has a 32 inch HD touchscreen, which is really cool, as well as Bluetooth audio, fans built in, and also the reflex technology, which makes it very comfortable to run on. The iFit library gives you access to world-class personal trainers and it adapts automatically based on resistance and incline of the machine in the moment of the class. There are also a lot of guest workouts which are pretty cool from recognizable athletes and in my case I'm joining the Michael Phelps class for example where they go for a bit of like a hike in Maui. What I really notice is just how well these are filmed. It makes you feel part of the hike and on top of that it has like an adjustable and interactive experience by changing the speed and the height based on where they're walking in the course. This is really a great way of how it separates itself from the rest of the treadmill's out there which is traditionally like a pretty boring product that you manually control. As you can see I'm having quite a bit of fun here and I'm traditionally someone who doesn't run that much but I do find it to be like an easy default workout to get a bit of like fresh air out there but to be honest the weather has been very on and off over the past few months. As you can see here the reflex cushioning technology is also doing a thing which absorbs the impact without sacrificing the durability and allows you to power through your toughest workouts while also protecting your joints and reducing post-workout burnout. On top of the interactive classes and the community that iFit has, it also gives you access to a ton of live classes, which I know has been very, very popular. So with the 32 inch display, as well as the interactive aspect, that is what really makes it Nordic Track different. But from a hardware standpoint, it has all of your controls on the front for incline, the speed, the fan built in, the Bluetooth speakers. So as you can see from like the iFit experience, as well as the manual aspects of just being an amazing treadmill. If you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below and a huge thanks to Nordic Track once again for sponsoring this video. So I'm just checking on this property now, and if you guys know, I purchased this about a year ago. It's gone through this whole renovation process, and now it is finally done and ready to go on Airbnb. The first rental is pretty soon, as I mentioned at the start of this video, but just getting like the final pieces together and ensuring we have all the little things. Um, this is like a table that I just added recently because I felt like the dining setup was just a little bit odd and there was a bit of space here. So yeah, like this 30 inch table on Amazon, three chairs is perfect, and over here, I've been waiting so long for this controversial media wall to finally arrive. There was like floods in BC, um, insulation and all that kind of stuff. And so it is finally done. It is the same material from Elmwood as the rest of the kitchen, but it's really nice to see this frame TV on here finally because you have the art displayed. I think it does look pretty good. Um, I know it is still like something that is a little bit weird, but I feel like you could still have a nice view of this whole like window presentation. And over on this side, there is this uh, little setup where you can have your computer. So yeah, um, whether or not it was well executed from a design standpoint, um, that's for you guys to decide, but it's finally done. And over here we have the control for like the Samsung frame TV. There's a bit of a bar where you have like this odd corner, but this is where we're gonna have a lot of the IO for like internet and all the smart home systems, maybe like some cups and stuff that people can grab over here. And yeah, um, other than that, the bedrooms have all kind of been completed as well. So we're just waiting for the cleaners from our Airbnb manager to actually set up all the bedding. But other than that, the furniture and everything's laid out. We just got to get that wire in the wall because that is very important, obviously, of being a feature property to not have exposed wires on the TVs. But this room actually turned out pretty good. Um, there was some questions about like the washer dryer setup and whether or not that looked any good. It still doesn't look great, but I feel like we made the most of it and the kitchen itself turned out really beautifully. So yeah, um, another like small issue that we're still trying to address is like there's a lot of cracking on these doors. They've been sealed and painted like four or five times now and there's still issues with like just the temperature change and everything with like the hemlock. So maybe that was a mistake, but it's definitely something that we're going to learn from for the future project. And just heading over to the main bedroom over here, 
This hasn't really seen too much change. Uh, the bed is all set up. It's a queen size and you have the two nightstands. There's also the TV right there. Exact same TCL one. I didn't want to put a frame TV in all three of the rooms. I feel like this little like sitting area is pretty cool, but there's still a very nice walkway here. I didn't want to put a console table. Um, and down here you still have a lot of storage for the additional bedding, which was important. And something that we also added very recently is some closets to the hallway. So those are from Ikea. They were really, really cheap compared to going with like any other option. They were, I think about like $300 for each set. These are all put together. I feel like it turned out pretty well. There's just some closet bars on both sides here. There's a luggage holder and um, drawers for everyone. So from a storage standpoint, I feel like this was a really, really good solution. Um, yeah, but I mean, everything is ready to go. It's uh, just finalizing. I picked up all of the home fixtures on Black Friday and we're just like getting that finishing touch, finishing all the presentation packages, working with our Airbnb manager, and that's kind of the update for this property. So usually at like the end of the day, I'll come by and see if anything has to be done, any changes, small fixes from the renovations. Um, it really isn't something that I wanna stop by like during the day because there's already a lot of work and like the new project going on, but it's important to still like check in and assign different tasks to different managers just to ensure it is a pretty hands-off process once we start our first few rentals. So now that I'm done work for the day, it is time to figure out what to do for dinner. And to be honest, this kind of changed depending on the day. Maybe I have a bit more work to do sometimes and we'll just like order some Uber Eats, which seems to be like a pretty common theme. But at the same time, I also try to maybe meet up with friends, have a dinner a few times a week. And I feel like that's like a really good time to just like catch up because everyone's got to eat. So you can always make time for it. Because the office is set up like a lounge but also used for filming, a lot of times right after I'm done work I can just go ahead and order food there, play some video games in the living room, and that was kind of what the kind of design intention was when I put it together. When it comes to like actually cooking food, that is definitely an area that I really haven't figured out and I don't really plan to anytime soon. It's just like not my area of skill set or interest. I did try to do some like prepared plans at the start of the pandemic and like just learn how to cook something. But to be honest, it always took a lot of time. There was some cleanup and like cooking for one person is just not that easy. And I also wasn't saving that much money because I would eat the two person portion each meal. So unless I'm like hanging out and someone else is cooking, I usually just prefer to order food in and be able to work at the same time because I feel like that is a lot more worth it and align with what I'm trying to do during the day. So as dinner kind of wraps up, it's usually around 7 or 8 and I can watch a bit of the hockey game before I get home and do kind of the second wave of work. And to be honest, like I used to stay up till like 1 or 2 a.m. and I was able to do that no problem. But as I got a little bit older, definitely need the sleep. And so I try to cap off the day at around midnight. I definitely do like working in the evening though, and whether it's like going through the Notion templates, making sure the task list is all set, or just doing some general color grading and making final touches to videos, I find that part of the process a lot more enjoyable instead of doing everything start to finish. And even though there are a lot of inquiries in the evening, this is the time that I'm really able to not only like get some video editing, color grading and stuff done, but I also tend to like have hockey in the background, which makes it a lot more fun. My favorite part of the entire video making process though is color grading. And this is where I get to put all my footage into DaVinci Resolve, convert it into a Rec. 709 format, and from there, adjust all of the basic parameters that make the footage technically correct. So that means the exposure, the shadows, the midtones, and also the white balance. I personally didn't understand histograms or anything until recently, but it's really cool to just watch a few tutorials and apply these skills right away. And so the basic thing is a lot of stuff we film just has like bright white backgrounds. And from there in the editing software, I can just try to line up those highlights and just visually reference whether or not the footage is actually balanced. The best part about being able to watch hockey during this time is that you don't actually have to have your full attention on color grading. You can kind of be a bit on and off with it, whereas when you're editing a full video, you do want to have your full attention because otherwise you'll have mistakes like I've had in the past and you guys have definitely pointed them out. Now that I have a total of three editors, both remote and in-house though, it has really taken a weight off of the daily workflow and instead I can focus on the areas of the business that I want to work on. 
Because I started YouTube back in middle school, high school, and also carried it on through university, I had gotten really used to working in the evenings. As soon as I would come back from school, I would take every second that I had to put into YouTube videos, and that really taught me um, the fact that I really want to do YouTube as a full-time career, and I still do that to this day. Working in the evenings has become a routine to be able to get ahead and also work on the administrative side of planning everyone's like note list and task list for the next day. As you probably tell in the mornings, I'm kind of all over the place and although filming should be the thing that I work on at the start of the day, because of all the administrative things and the side projects that we're also working on, it does take up a huge bulk of it and so editing is only done during the hours that we don't typically film, which is the evening. I'll usually grab a couple snacks as I watch hockey and one of them that I've been eating a lot of lately is Smart Sweets and to be honest, the first time I tried it, I didn't really like the flavor that much but I tried some of the other ones and found a preference very quickly. After the hockey game is over, it's usually around like 9.30 or 10 p.m. in the west coast and from there I'll go and check any of the remaining emails that I may have missed during the day and there usually is a wave of emails from Asia that start to come in around 9 p.m. onwards. Because the home series is also a large part of like the daily routine at the moment and going to be the biggest series on the channel to date, I do have to spend a lot of time on it. And to be honest, I don't love the fact that the home meetings, interior design meetings and all that like stuff is Monday to Friday 9 to 5 because it really does cut into a very busy schedule already. But I try to get as big of a head start as I can in the evenings by going through like different websites and curating products that I might like, looking through magazines and putting them all into Milanote. That way I can review them with the interior designer the day after and save a bit of time. As you can see, I've got everything laid out in a board here from different companies that are planning to work with, the fixture selections, and I actually didn't really know about this software before, but it allows me to just go anywhere in the internet, hit the save button, it will add it to the clipboard and also add a direct hyperlink. So anyone can reference it, I can go ahead and purchase it, and also email the representatives with a direct link to the product selected. The reason why I'm going into such detail about software is simply because I don't really use that many of them. Notion is the one that I'm in literally every single day and it has been really really good, but their mobile app honestly sucks a lot, they really gotta fix that. But as you can probably see in like my raw day in life, my day is not exactly that structured, I'm definitely a bit all over the place, and it's literally because I have so many ideas, but I also have a huge lack of patience. Even though I've chipped away at this YouTube job for like the last 10 years, and it's brought me to a place that I'm very happy with and could never have expected, there are constantly new projects and ways that we can branch out while also tying back to the core YouTube channel and the tech content that we produce. But otherwise, that is pretty much it for this video, and if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Keaton, stay there, man. It makes it look casual. For the longest year, like three or four years, what's changed? One thing that's changed, uh, we have an office now that doesn't get used. Uh, people go there to play the F1 sim, and we film there, like, what, once a week, I want to say? Oh. You think so? How would you describe my, my daily routine? Daily routine? Mm, pure chaos, I would say, yeah. I've never seen a more ADHD individual in my life. Yeah, Literally. he spends five seconds on each task, so like, if you have a question, you're lucky if you're getting one thing answered at a time. ADHD is how other people describe him, so he's all over the place, and sometimes you'll ask him a question, he won't even acknowledge you. I mean, when it comes to the day in life, it is hectic and chaotic, he's... 17 screens, just like Instagram, DMs, you know, and he's still answering emails and yelling at three different people at the same time. Health-wise, ah, the only exercise I see is when he goes from his desk to the washroom, which is frequently. He likes to mix in a salad just for the video. What did you describe as As clean. Are you clean? Cleanliness hasn't changed, really, um, other than Andy helps clean up, so that kind of clears things up, but uh... How do I say a bomb went off, but in a funny way? It looks like he just hired like a crew of people with leaf blowers to walk in during the weekend and just blow shit everywhere. Coming, working here, coming as a fan, it's definitely a lot different than I expected. In terms of spending, he, he'll like splurge on like camera lenses and other things that are thousands of dollars. He won't bat an eye, but then when it comes to like five to ten dollar items, he, he's trying to save pennies and he's really stingy about some other things. Literally, like if, if your workflow were encapsulated in one space, it would be this room right now. It's just like, you have no idea what's going on. I feel like it's just kind of chaotic in general. 